Kate, I want to talk about one huge factor that influences your performance dramatically, your mood and concentration. Here are some of my tips that can improve both of them. At the very top of the list is managing external pressure. This means the stress and expectations that weigh heavily on your shoulders from your friends and family. It's tough to stay at home all day and design website after website, even more so when you get eliminated from contests without feedback and your partner's looking at you disappointed for sitting at home spending all day at your computer. As I was grinding, my family thought I was playing video games, that I was wasting my life away. It's important you break any potential tension right from the start. Sit down with the important people in your life and explain you're about to try this out for a certain period of time. Don't expect their love and support, but do look for a bit of understanding. That's all you need. Mention your deadline, your plan, and be done with it. This will relieve a lot of outside pressure. Just put yourself in your partner's shoes. One person's getting up early and going to work each and every day, while the other one sits at their computer all day long, drawing God knows what without making any money. Oh, you finish the entire project and then you might get paid. All this while sitting hunched over in your pyjamas at the computer. It looks bad. That's why you have to explain what's going on. Don't involve them in the process, don't ask for their feedback, and don't vent when something isn't going right. They won't understand how hard this line of work truly is. So ask for a bit of time and understanding and get to work. Don't show your enthusiasm either. When you fail, and you will fail, people will be very quick to laugh at you. I've heard this time and time again from my students. It's a shame, but that's how it is. Another way of improving your mood and concentration is by relieving the stress you put on yourself. This can cripple you. If you design like your life depends on it, that may actually be counterproductive. Decide to give it your all, but don't be too hard on yourself. I know I'm super critical of my performance, I know we all are, but give yourself a break. One great piece of advice I've heard is this. Talk to yourself like you'd talk to a friend. Be supportive, be understanding. When you lose a contest, don't say bad things about yourself. Don't bash your skills. It's so easy to find your own flaws and feel bad about them. Think about how you'd act if a friend came in and said, man, I don't think I'm doing a good job. I'm not getting positive comments. I'm mentally exhausted all the time. I just don't think I'm up for it. Would you say, that's right, you're dumb and useless, a failure and a loser. You're never going to be able to make anything of yourself. Of course not then why would you speak to yourself like that? Here's another example. When you need a break, you need to stop and relax. Fully enjoy it. Don't resent it. You decided you're going to give it your best shot, so whatever the outcome, you have to be okay with it. You have to relax and rest to perform at your highest setting. There's a lot more to be said on this subject, but try and have fun. Don't view freelancing as a major gamble or like it's an earth-shattering moment in your life. Be playful, be happy about experimenting something new. I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but you have to keep your spirit up because that's all you have. Every day of your grind, you're by yourself, so it's essential you have good conversations going on inside your head. Another thing that can set you free and subsequently improve your mood is this. Accept you're missing out. It's happened loads of times. It's a beautiful day outside, sunshine, perfect weather, kids are outside playing, couples are strolling in the park, and you're locked away in your house. It's depressing, I know, but that's part of the process. You will spend less time with your friends, family or partner. Accept it, let them know it's temporary, and be free of that burden. Then, the next time you're going to have to turn someone down, it won't feel as bad. Quick note here, I'm not saying you should cut all ties with society. Do go out, do have fun, but limit that to only a few hours per week. And like I said before, when you go out, enjoy it and leave all your thoughts at your desk. Don't worry about your ratings, how much time you have left in a contest and all that jazz. Be there in the moment and energise yourself. Here's another thing that works for me, though it's a bit silly. Take care of yourself. We already covered running and working out, but here's another thing that really boosts my mood. Exfoliate, moisturise, and just take care of your face. It's easy to neglect your body, so I've set up some alarms that remind me to use face cream, and especially eye cream, every single day. I also exfoliate twice per week. Now, I can imagine your reaction. I bought a course on Photoshop freelancing and web design, and this guy here is talking about using moisturising creams. But I promise you, you will feel so much better when you look in the mirror and you won't have any dark circles under your eyes. 
I'm resorting to every trick in the book to keep myself in good spirit, and the difference this makes is significant, at least for me, but hey, who doesn't like to have nice soft skin? Another thing I do is cut out absolutely all distractions. I love podcasts and listening to music, but there's a special time and place for them. When you work, stop everything else. But when you pause, it's fine to multitask. For example, when I'm listening to something, I usually do chores around the house. I find that's the best way to go about it. Jam to a song, all out, move around, jump around, sing along, the works. And then get back to work in complete silence. I also like to grab a jacket and stand out on the balcony for at least two to three minutes to get some fresh air. You'd be amazed by how these very simple things change your focus and improve your mood and your ability to concentrate. Last but not least, when your concentration just isn't there, don't start a new project. Instead, create some variations for the work you've already done. You're still making progress and you're also saving some mental energy as it's fairly easy to just cruise through an existing project change up the colour scheme, use other photos and so on. Make these smart choices and the results should speak for themselves. OK, that's it for this lecture. I'll see you soon.